Hey everyone, Spicy Toes Gaming here. It's patch notes day, so let's get into it. Now we're just gonna be talking about the changes that are gonna be affecting Path of Champions. If there's any card changes that don't really affect cards you generally see in Path of Champions, not gonna bring them up here, just gonna try to bring you all the information that's relevant for Path of Champions. All right, let's get into it. So first up, they are nerfing Samira yet again. So her flare is now going to a two cost. That's definitely going to hurt you. And Samira now no longer gets cost reduction for her flare. So before she could generate free flares, which was very, very strong. But here, as you see, now if you have a flare, you reduce its cost by one on summon and strike. So you will be able to make these flares cost a little bit cheaper. But before, they already only cost one. And then her level 2 version would create free flares anyways, but now her level 2 version is now going to be reducing down their cost by 2 on summon or strike. And this is if you already have one in hand. So this is a little annoying for us as Samira is strong in Path of Champions, but not overly so. But I think she's just being too dominant in PvP, and so they're nerfing her, and sadly we're having to face the consequences. We'll have to test her out yet again, as Samira's greatest strength is that she could rush down the enemy very quickly, but just making you spend more and more mana is really going to hurt that, so we'll have to see if she actually ends up falling down a tier. Alright, next up, Pike. His unleveled and leveled up version, and then his death from below, all going to a 5 cost. This is going to really hurt you, especially if you don't have a max level Pike. Now once Pike gets all of his relics and all of his bonuses from leveling up to level 30, he's very strong, so if you have that version of Pike, then this will be annoying, but you still should be very strong. But especially if you're trying to level up Pike, he can be pretty rough to level. So you will very much feel this change, and it will make your deck feel much weaker. So this is very sad. Again, Pike is strong in Path of Champions, but not overly so. It's just he is too dominant right now in PvP, sadly. All right, next up, the Exalted Cloudwinder. So this is one of the cards that's in Janna's deck. So before it had the stat line of a 3-2, now it is losing 1 damage and going to a 2-2. Two -two. Fairly annoying. You do have a Phage on this, so it will be a 4-4. Four -four. But making it not have that 5 power is then going to make things like Trifarian not be able to proc when you play them. And then with Quick Attack, having 1 extra damage can often be the difference between killing the enemy opponent and not taking any damage back, or failing to kill the enemy and losing your card. Now this won't affect your deck too much, but it definitely makes this card weaker. And especially when you're playing this card early on without that Phage, this is going to be more tempting to cut now from your deck. Sting Officer, this is going to a 1-2 instead of a 2-1. This is mainly going to affect the power where you summon a Sting Officer at the start of the game. I think this is actually a good change and actually more of a buff. It's nice to have this unit on the board and being able to get those ne Nexus Strikes off to damage the Nexus. Normally you're wanting this to be able to proc your Plunder effects and maybe get your champion on the board round one if you're using a champion that uses Scourge's Stash. So it having one health and it being able to be killed by anything uh, really was a problem. So this actually will probably help us and will be a good change for us overall. Omenhawk, uh, now able to block Elusives. So this will be very nice. I think this is only in Ash's deck, but still having more counterplay to deal with Elusives will be quite nice. So overall, just a solid change for the Omenhawk. All right, next up, they're changing Jack's kind of combo game ending card. You can play Knuckle, that lets you play a Mako, and then you can play a Bull. So they changed it, so Mako now has Brash instead of Overwhelm, and they gave the bigger unit, now that's 7-6 and Overwhelm. So this makes it just work out much better. You want Overwhelm on your biggest unit, and they even gave it one extra power. You normally weren't able to get this whole combo out, but it is nice that they're buffing it so that if you do actually play all three of these cards, you should be able to end the game. So solid change right here. Maddled Babs, another change for the Jack deck. It's now getting a tune, but it is losing one power. Now this isn't that bad, since it has that effect of when you refill mana, grant me one power for each mana refilled. With that attune, you should be immediately getting that power back, so this is just overall a buff to the Jack deck. Teemo is getting a nice quality of life buff. Now his Nexus Strike will at least plant five Puff Caps. So what could happen before is if you had a leveled Teemo, he'd be trying to double the amount of Puff Caps in the enemy deck. But if there were no Puff Caps in the enemy deck, 
then it wouldn't really work. This isn't really going to be a buff to the Teemo deck itself, but more to the powers that could generate a champion. So there's an item you can put on some spells where it'll summon a champion for its cost. So that could often summon a Teemo, or there's other powers in the game that can also summon champions for you. So this will just be a buff to those versions of Teemo when the deck isn't actually built around him. So he'll now at least be planting five puff caps. They're changing exhaust. This is now burst speed, so it used to be focus. This is very, very good. It's in a couple decks. I believe it's at least in the Nasus deck. This is very good though, because now you can actually use it in response to what the enemy does to surprise them and reduce down their attack. Making it focus speed made it pretty bad and only really useful for setting up attacks, where now being able to use it to try to defend yourself and not take too much damage will be quite nice. Shadow Step. So this is actually Kane's champion spell. It's now going from a four cost to a three cost, and this will be pretty big for Kane. It's a very strong effect, giving Kane quick attack for the round and then letting him start a free attack challenging an enemy. So it's a great way to get removal and start your scaling with Kane. But while it was a good effect, that four cost just normally made it a little bit too expensive for you to really be able to play. But just making it go down to a three cost will help a lot because you can have three spell mana. So now if you have something like sorcery that's refilling your spell mana for you, you can play this much more freely. You may actually want to run Grand General's Counterplan on Kane now, since you could generate these every single round and use them to continually take out enemy targets. Next up then, a buff to the Echo deck. Called Shot is now going to Focus Speed from Slow Speed. So I believe this is also Echo's Champion spell, where you're drawing a card and creating a Parallel Convergence in your deck. That Parallel Convergence is a very powerful effect that lets you create a ephemeral copy of your whole board and attack with all of them. So it can often be a game ending spell, so it's very strong. This going to focus speed, very nice. Quite often when you're playing Echo, you might want to be playing a couple of these and just having to be slow takes so long to actually go through. So being able to play these very quickly on your turn will be quite nice. Next then they added some new skins for champions, obviously themed for Halloween, and these do look pretty good, especially that Twisted Fate one. Next there's going to be the bundle we talked about earlier, and it's actually gonna have a lot more things than I thought. So it's gonna contain this Soul Eater champion skin, some champion fragments, although it doesn't say how many, and then the Starforge Gauntlet that we touched on earlier, as well as having a Greater Cosmic Pearl and a Spirit Forge. Now Spirit Forge, that's a way that you can get a Epic Relic on your champion, and the Cosmic Pearl is a consumable that lets you level up a champion faster. And they say that this is going to be available in the store starting November 1st, which makes sense because you're not able to earn Aurelian Soul until November 1st. I was hoping it was going to go live right away so I could try to unlock Aurelian Soul early, but apparently that won't be the case. So we don't know how much this bundle will be. It'll probably be fairly pricey. We also don't know how many fragments there will be for Aurelian Soul. But if you like Path of Champions and you really want Aurelian Soul, there's a lot of good things in here. And honestly, I don't mind them doing this at all. The game does need more ways to earn some money or so keep surviving. So I'm not upset by this, uh, although I'm sure there will be some people that just call it pay to win and get very upset about it. All right, so news for Path of Champions. Most of this was all covered before, but Aurelian Soul will be unlockable as a four-star champion. His champion fragments will only be earnable through the monthly challenge or that bundle. And then all the rewards we're getting from the monthly challenges won't be earnable until November 1st. Playing the monthly challenges this month, it's really just gonna be practice. You're not gonna get any rewards for doing it this month you're only going to get rewards starting next month for next month's monthly challenge. Greater Cosmic Pearl, so this is what you're going to be getting with that Aurelian Soul Bundle, a equipable relic that can be put into an empty relic slot. If a champion completes an adventure with this relic, they will receive 10 times bonus experience points and the relic will be consumed. So that is absolutely massive. If you're able to do this and complete like an entire Aurelian Soul run, that alone will probably level you up to like 30. So pretty crazy right here. Great way to grind out champion levels. Wouldn't be too bad if they also made this purchasable through the Emporium for some Stardust if you wanted to focus on leveling up your champions as opposed to trying to get those epic relics. Spirit Forge, this is the consumable. It lets you upgrade your slot to an epic relic slot. 
They just changed the name to Spirit Forge. They had it named the Epic Quest Consumable before. The Star Forge Gauntlets, we did touch on this earlier, but this will be the Epic Relic in that bundle. If I'm Titanic, plus one starting mana, so very, very strong right there. And then you can find level two champions when you invoke or manifest, even if I'm not in play, so very strong effect. And then those level two champions will proc as a fourth option in the invoke instead of replacing one of the three options. So pretty much blatantly the most powerful epic relic for anyone to use as long as they're titanic and use invoke or manifest. So pretty much for Aurelian Soul or Volibear. Now here are Aurelian Soul star powers. We did touch on them before, but let's just make sure that they didn't change anything. So when you play a created card, reduce the cost of allied champions everywhere by one. And then when you play a champion, level them up. That's funny. It's supposed to say you're welcome, but the second part got cut off. That's kind of funny there. Two star plus one starting mana. Bestow a rare or epic item on all upon all your created cards. Yep, same as before. Three star. It's reducing the cost of champions everywhere by two. So yeah, just doubling the first star power. Then for the four star, when you play a unit, double its stats. If it's Aurelian Soul, the skies descend upon all enemies. So same thing as before. Skies descend being Aurelian Soul's champion spell. That deals 15 damage to the entire enemy board. And again, you see right here, available beginning November 1st after the monthly challenge reset. All right, under miscellaneous, looks like we're finally getting all that thousand stardust. Some of you were able to guess that after the dev interview where you could see this as an option. But yeah, if you defeat the Relian Soul, you're going to get a thousand stardust which you can claim via your mail. And then if you haven't defeated him yet, the first time you defeat him, you will get that thousand stardust. Increase the legend cap to 50. We already talked about that as well. For bug fixes, this first one is very good, especially for me. Fix an issue where the cost reduction granted by found fortune, so that's an epic relic, would only last one round. So great that they're fixing that. Fix an issue where astral radiance caused certain champions to not level up properly in Path of Champions. Never really noticed that myself. Fix an issue where Oracle's Eye was not correctly showing what happened with Nico's Shape Splitter when blocking. Very nice. I did notice this was an issue when I was leveling her up. Fixed an issue where wild cards weren't properly rewarded with the weekly vault or road reward chests. So this was an issue for a couple weeks. Very nice that they're fixing it. So you should be getting some more wild cards from your weekly vault and rewards. And then finally at the bottom, fixed a bug where various quests were stuck on completion and would not roll over for some players. Now I hope this includes the fact that some quests are just flat out missing. It's a little sad that we're not seeing anything addressing this bug fix a little bit more. I was hoping that they would talk about that in one of the different live streams that they did saying, hey, we're gonna reward everyone that's been having issues with the event pass and maybe just give everyone that bought the event pass all the stuff since it's been broken for so long. So a little disappointing they didn't touch on that here. We'll open up the game on Wednesday after the patch drops to see if it's actually been fixed. Overall though, this is a pretty solid patch for Path of Champions, increasing the legend level up to 50, giving us a whole bunch of awesome rewards for those legend levels that all have duplicate protection. Really, really solid. This is going to help a lot of people earn more relics as well as finish out their collection. Adding rewards to monthly challenges, something we've needed for a very long time, so great to see that. And even adding in a bundle. I am completely fine with this as long as the epic relic is also earnable in-game, then I have no problem with this. The game needs to make money, so if people want to support the company by getting this, then there's no problem with that for me. All right, that's it for these patch notes. If you want to discuss everything Path of Champions, I have a link to my Discord down below where there's constantly discussions happening for all things Path of Champions, including the monthly adventures. All right, I hope you all have a great day and a great week.